All right. About uh, eight weeks ago, I'd ordered a TiVo Flash back when the price was $217. This is the 50% build, the basic unit, and uh, it does come with a TMC driver, so there was no point paying extra for that. Unfortunately, when it uh, arrived, uh, one of the proximity sensors, one on the Y carriage back here, was uh, damaged, and I contacted TiVo, and they said they'd send one right out. It hasn't arrived yet. It's only been like two weeks since uh, since then. I imagine it'll take at least three weeks to get here. But uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity to let you see inside the thing and talk about some of the stuff that I discovered. For example, on the inside, um, on the drivers, since I had it open anyway to uh, get that sensor out, I decided I'd just go ahead and check all of the stepper driver uh, voltage settings. And it was kind of odd in that uh, X, Y, Z, and this is the uh, extruder. On the uh, X and Y, I had 1.2 volts, but on the Z, it had... Uh, 0.34 or something like that. I mean, not even a volt. And then the extruder was the same as the first two, about 1.2. I've gone back and I've adjusted them all to one volt. I don't. Uh, I've never on any of my printers, and I've you know I've had dozens. I've never had to run anything as high as 1.2. If I ever do need to, I can crank them back up. But I think I'll give it a shot at one volt first. But the odd thing I was trying to point out is if you uh, get a new printer from China, it might not be a bad idea just to open it up for no other reason than to check your stepper driver settings and make sure that they are, you know, set even closely right. For some reason, this one had gotten missed, not set up right. I also wanted to point out that uh, on your printer's we have your end stop sensors. In this case, it was the the Y sensor detecting when the bed is all the way back. I have gone ahead and, and in the meantime, while I'm waiting for a switch, and I don't know if I can get the camera down here enough to show you or anything, but basically I made a little aluminum bracket and just took a normal uh, switch. I think off one of the old CR10s that I've had, had a spare switch laying around and plugged it into the board wire the switch is uh, normally open, not normally closed. It closes when the bed comes back and contacts it and hooked it in. Works just fine. But I don't want to, didn't want to put everything back together because I am waiting for the, the proper sensor to arrive. The proper sensor will look like like one of these. Here, if I can get it in front of the camera. Like that little guy. It senses on the end. They sell the sensor with um, end sensing and top sensing. They sell it uh, normally closed and normally opened. I have sourced other vendors for it. It's uh, made by Sun X. And for example, let's... Uh, there's a picture, a close-up of my damaged wood. You can see here where it looks like it got hit and it's kind of a cracked case. But the GL-8H is the number for the one that's being used on uh, this device. Let's see, can I make this go away? And for example, here is a seller on uh, AliExpress that'll sell them. You'll get two of them for $10.88. But you do have to tell them which one you want. So in this case, I wanted the, if it's in there, the GL8H. So I do have uh, two coming from this vendor, just in case TiVo uh, never sends me any. I'll have some others. This picture kind of gives you a rough idea of where you can get the ones where the sensors on the top, or you can get the sensors in the end. In the case, we have the sensor in the end for the uh, TiVo flash. There are small LEDs built into them that light when the thing is triggered. I found something else interesting while I was looking into this whole thing here. Let's see if we can bring it back up. No, nope. I'm out in the shop and I can't bring it back up. I'll put links though um, in the bottom of the description. I found the PDF page describing the sensors and the interesting thing about the sensor is it's actually rated 12 volts to 30 volts. 
this particular control board is a 5 volt even though the machine is a 24 volt machine the the logic on the sensors and everything is at 5 volts so I guess it works I mean there's a few of these printers out there but they're basically running the uh, 20, uh, 12 to 24 volt sensor on 5 seems kind of odd now it is a uh, uh, an open collector output on the sensor and what that means is I could go ahead and patch the sensor wires that are all on here up to the 24 volt supply and not have to worry about feeding a wrong voltage back into the board because it's an open collector the collector goes to ground when it's triggered it's called a it's an NPN transistor it's a grounded emitter switch which means you have an open collector and that means you could run the sensor voltage the control voltage anything you want because all it's doing is closing its output pin to ground and when it's not sensor and not when it's when it's not triggered its output pin is an open no nothing there at all the pull up happens on the control board so you can adopt any sort of sensor and there's a whole bunch of different sensors out there that you can see online i don't have to i don't have to use this little uh guy that they have designed there i could put in almost anything i want in there and of course the only sensor that's really important is your z this little one that you just saw me holding right here that normally would bolt on here but i can't have it the cable is so short i can't do it when i've got everything down that's the only one that's critical because you need that one to be reliable and always be right or you won't have your bed level right every time your machine homes your uh your x doesn't really matter if it was off a millimeter it wouldn't make any difference to your print and if your y was off a millimeter it wouldn't make any difference to your print but this guy here needs to be at least 0.1 of a millimeter or better repeatable every single time otherwise your first layer is gonna suffer so i just thought i'd give you guys a peek inside the nice thing about this board too also when you get close and you look everything is labeled all of the jacks all the plugs you can see what everything is they're all stated what they are um, it's very nice it's very clean seems to be very well built very sturdy no wobble really anywhere so once i get that new sensor i'm going to put it all together i mean i could put it together now with this mechanical switch in here and it would work but then i just have to tear it apart again once the sensor arrives i'm going to give them another uh week maybe two weeks at the most and see if they actually send me one or if one of the other ones that i ordered arrives oh and inside the sensors by the way if you break this plastic housing off what you have going on in there let's see right Ugh. Get in, try to get enough light and try to get the camera here's the little control board it's basically the comparator the led and the drive circuit and this little teeny round goober here see that little teeny thing that's a coil small coil of wire which connects to wait a minute I'm fighting things here which would connect to the circuit with those little hairline wires you can look online to see how uh, inductive proximity sensors work but basically there's a circuit in here it's feeding this coil a frequency. It's a uh, very low voltage, low current. This whole thing only draws about 15 milliamps. And what happens is, is when metal gets close to this coil that you're feeding that signal to, the eddy currents from the metal and that will lower the level of, of the frequency that's being fed into that. The circuit then senses that the, the level has dropped and that's how it knows when something's close to it that's metallic. And that's how they work. But um, I'll put links in for the sensors if you're interested. You can also find them even on eBay if you want to pay more. Uh, the original company manufacturer is SunX, S-U-N-X. And just look for proximity or inductive sensors and you'll see them pop up. And again, if you're putting them on the TiVo Flash and maybe some of the other TiVos, um you're gonna want the normally open one so bear that in mind because you can get normally opened or normally closed and some of your machines might not have the sensor on on the end they might have them on the top so you want to look at how it's laid out too but there you go so there's an inside look uh 
Also, I found a vendor for the entire control board for 20 bucks. So if you need a spare board, I can put a link in for the board. And it has some good information because it has pictures that'll show you how everything is marked and laid out and all that good stuff. Um, everything else about the machine was good. Like I say, I think this sensor probably got broken shipping. The bed probably slid back, hit the front of the sensor, and that's what cracked it. Basically, it, it, because it's epoxy filled, it's a waterproof sensor. And once it got cracked, that uh, kind of severed the connections between this little coil and the circuit board. So they couldn't communicate any longer. In my case, the LED was on all the time. I thought it was triggered all the time. So it couldn't home the Y because it thought it already was homed. And I think that's all I wanted to say.